let's look at another reason why I'd like you not to ever run the drop column command. Create a table called T as a copy of DBA procedures. There's my table called T. It's got a certain amount of columns. I want you to focus on a few columns here. We've got obviously a number of columns up here. And then we have a column called pipeline. It's about, it's about in the middle. And I, I picked that just so it's easy to remember. It's pipeline, it's in the middle. I got some columns above and some columns below, but we're looking at the column called pipeline. I'm gonna create a trigger on my table because often we create triggers on our tables. And I'm referencing the pipeline column, and I'm also referencing a column that comes before the pipeline column, the object ID. But it's just your stock standard trigger. And what I'm doing is if the pipeline value is not null, then I'm going to capture it into my effectively a debugging table. I'm going to capture every time this trigger fires and pipeline is not null. Keep that in mind. So let's test this out. I insert a row into my table, and as you can see, the third column there, pipeline, I'm actually inserting the value of yes for that, which obviously is non-null. So I select from my messages table, and you can see, yeah, nothing spectacularly surprising here, we actually logged a row in our messages table. If I do an insert where the pipeline value is null, I shouldn't see a row go into the messages table, and as you can see, there's still just the solitary row. For the value of one, we got the row. For the value of two, where the pipeline was null, we didn't get a row. So everything's working exactly as it's meant to. Let's do set unused columns. That's a good thing. Let's do drop unused column. That's a bad thing. Let me now jump straight in and insert a value for three, object ID of three into my table. Pipeline is yes. So pipeline is not null. And look what's in my messages table. I didn't capture the row. The trigger didn't fire. And in fact, something odd is going on here. And this is just straight out a plain old bug. If I look at the trigger, I drop some columns. And even though those columns, or I suppose because those columns didn't reference any of the columns in the trigger code, the database kept that trigger as valid. But obviously, in terms of compilation, if I've done drop unused columns, I've actually shuffled the columns. Column seven is now column six, et cetera, et cetera. So the trigger probably should have been marked invalid because the internal compilation of what an actual each column is has probably changed. Because we didn't, we have this problem. I actually do need to compile this trigger even though it's already valid. Once I compile it, I insert that value three again, and this time it's actually now captured. Moral of the story is if you do drop unused columns and you have triggers on those tables, then in all versions of oracles, your triggers may still be marked as valid and no longer be working properly. So if you want to even more of the story, don't run the drop unused columns command. <laughs>